taking on the battle of faith. Amen. Are you fighting for the Lord? Yes, Are you going to hold out? Glory to God. The race is not given to the swift, neither to the strong, but it is given to those that endure to the end. Come one day. I'm on the battle Can you say that? Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Could have been, should have been, would have been. Sleeping in the narrow channels of my grave. Somebody say we're on the wake up now. We're on the wake up leap. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm glad my name is wrote. It is glass full of life. It ain't wrote with a, a, a ballpark pen or a lead pencil. It's wrote with the precious blood of Jesus. Can you say amen? It's an honor to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. My message today is derived from conversations in times past with so-called know-it-all word folks. <laughs> Mainly us preachers. We, we think we got all the answers. And what really got to me was a statement that was made pertaining to preaching. Now, I've been at this thing for 30 some years and I don't think God has ever called me in the room and told me, son, you got it wrong. But the statement was made, you ain't preached until you go to the cross. <laughs> and I thought for a moment, I said, now, most of us jack lay preachers go to the cross on we ain't spent no time in the Word. <laughs> and we get to a point in our message or in our preaching that we decide, hey, I need some help. <laughs> so we run to the cross. <laughs> I've never, never read in the Bible that God said, Son, when you get up and tell them the good news, make sure before you sit down you go to the cross. Uh -huh. But that kind of, it just didn't sit well with me. And God gave me some comments. I think I'm going to share it with you. God gave me a little bit of comments. He said, Son, don't worry about that. Uh -huh. He said, You first, <laughs> before you can. Go to the cross. <laughs> you got to preach about what the cross was about. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. To get to the cross, you got to what? You got to start before the cross. Uh -huh. Now, if that's what you want to do in your preaching is go to the cross every time you stand and declare the word, that's your business, but that don't tell me that that is preaching only if you make it to the cross. All right, all right. So what I want to do this morning is just relay some information yes. that is beneficial to the body of Christ. Right. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. Glory to God. Ephesians, chapter 4. And let's go to probably the very first verse. <clears throat> now let's, let's, let's go to two. Let's go to chapter two. And the very first verse. We'll read to God's religion. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. We are living in a time where the word is not turning to a anymore. So as we preach now, God says, 
have clarity, not demonstration, with sound and rhetoric, but be clear. So let's, let's be clear this morning. Are you there yet? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Saying, You were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, whom among we all once lived in passion of our flesh, caring about the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God being rich in mercy, because of the great love in which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with Him and seated with us with Him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So that in the coming ages He might show the immeasurable riches of His grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Not of your own doing, it is the gift of God. Not of the results of work so that no one can boast. But we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in Him. I want to back up to verse 4. God who was rich in mercy because of His great love which He loved us even when we were dead in trespasses and our sins. Amen. Six, and raised us up and seated us with Him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You will be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk just a little bit about knowing what Paul did. Knowing what Paul did. Amen. You know, y'all remember years ago, and I probably still do it, but not as often. I used to like to bring props and present it as I preach. And this thought came to my mind. Two children sitting at a table. Two empty eight-ounce glasses before them. And the parent, mother or father, comes with a pitcher of milk and begins to pour each one some milk in their respective glasses. He pours one in the glass completely full. He pours the other only a third full. What happens in that incident is the one that got the full glass of milk have a mindset, I'm better than you. The one that has their glass of milk that's only a third full has the mindset they don't care as much for me as they do for you. So there is a conflict in the body of Christ when God chose the Jewish people as his chosen people that caused us Gentiles to feel left out. The Word of God called us dogs. Can you say amen? Because we were not His chosen people. But the bottom line is this. Nobody knew the mind of God. And no one actually understood the plan of God. So as I studied Paul, Paul is my spiritual hero. I, 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 I tell him last Wednesday night, I read about Paul's ministry all the time. And as I read about Paul's ministry, more inclined I am to, to search out everything I need to know or want to know about his particular ministry. If you understand or if you remember, Paul was called to preach to us dogs. Can I say that again? God chose Paul to preach to the dogs. The folks that seemingly by the Jewish nation was left out. So the word of God tells us that there was a mystery in, in 
in the, in the, in the Word of God. In, in other words, there is a mystery of the kingdom of God. There's a mystery at that time about the Word of God. But who knows what the mystery was? It ain't a, a lot of hidden things that we suppose the mystery was that God intended for Jews and Gentiles, born and free, can you say that, to become a family. So the mystery is that God's a family man. Amen. He, he's about family. He, it ain't about Jews or Greek or born or free nor male nor female. It's all about family. Can you say amen? Paul, if you check it out, Paul, I, I, I never understand why Paul got joy in preaching. Because guess what? Paul was told some things no other apostle ever was ever told. He was experiencing things that no other apostle ever experienced. Can you say amen? amen? So but Paul was called to preach to the dogs. In other words, those of us that were afar off. So what Paul's ministry was is to tell people that you are special to God. Amen. Not, not because you're not a, not just not because you're not a Jew, you're not special. God says you are special. Amen. And the only thing that's going to get folks saved in the household of faith is not us preaching, getting to the cross. It's letting folk know they're special. It don't matter what situation they're in, what condition they're in, what type of lifestyle they have. We first have to let them know God cares about it. Amen. Amen. I ain't never hardly ever seen nobody get saved when I get a tune and begin to talk about he died. Did y'all hear that? All he died was is get me over the hump because I was ill prepared to preach that particular Sunday. So I'm adding the reservoir of the, the crucifixion to my message to make it sound good. But he died ain't going to save nobody. Amen. But when I begin to tell folk that he has made us to sit together in heavenly places with his son, that, that gets poor folks' mind to think. And see what God does when he gets your mind to think, and then he can get to your heart. But if, he, if he's playing on your emotions, ain't nothing going to ever change. We wonder why people in the household of faith don't want to ever change. It's because God never, it, it, it never gets to their heart. It just gets to their mind. They feel good. And they shout a little bit. They run all over the church. And they holler here and there. And they turn cartwheels. But nothing really happened in the heart. The, 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 the story on, 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 on God got the hill don't mess with my heart. It's a story that sounds good. It might even make me feel good. But it won't make me stop doing my mess. So Paul, Paul began to talk to them and let them know, hey, there's something stronger than the cross because the cross is a finished work. You need to get away from that and go on to a bigger and better thing. Can you say amen? In other words, you, you got to know, in other words, you got to know what the cross was about. The cross is very, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not preaching again. It's very important. But the songs are at the cross. At the cross, where I first saw that because of the cross, I saw the light. Because of the cross, I, I had a way out of my darkness because of the cross. But the thing of it is, I got to know what got the cross or got Jesus to the cross. He that knew no sin was made sin that I might become the righteousness of God through him. In other words, I wasn't nothing but dirt. I wasn't nothing but filth. I wasn't nothing but a dog. But him dying on the cross got me in right stead. Yes, when Jesus hung, bled, and died and said, it's finished, all he was saying was, God, I made a way for him. Yes, in other words, they had no way but until I was obedient unto death. Now they got a way back to you. Yes, it's over. It's done. It's a finished work. I don't have to go back to the cross. He already done, done that for me. Now I've got to know what I need to do in appreciation of what he's done on Calvary. Yeah. All right. Come on. What? The Apostle Paul, he was eloquent in speech. This man was educated. There a lot of other preachers, now we spend a lot of 
lot of time going to college you know, theologians. We want to learn everything we can learn about how to preach. And not how to be a preacher. But how to preach. Not how to be one, but how to deliver. But Paul said, I don't preach with enticing words of man's wisdom, but with the power of the Holy Ghost. He, 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 he was educated. He could preach with a tune. He could do all of those things. But he chose to use common words so folks' hearts would be preached. Yes. Me hook, whooping and hollering and holding my ear and slobbering all the way. It won't mess with your heart. It'll mess with your mind just a little bit. It'll cause you to get goosebumps or want to jump and shout. But it won't change that condition of that heart. The only thing will change that condition of your heart is me telling you about what Jesus has already done. Why he came, why he died, why he was obedient unto death. That is the only thing that's going to mess with your heart. Jesus. Jesus. Knowing what Paul knew. Paul had a way of preaching. It wasn't a way, it was his anointing. His anointing was so strong that when he stood before King Agrippa preaching, it pricked his not his, it pricked his heart just a little bit, but not to a point that it caused him to take the next step. Mm -hmm. King of River said, Paul, you almost persuaded me. Right. Paul had such a passion about talking about what Jesus has, has done for our sin that it caused folks to rethink their thinking. Yes. Uh -huh. Take a look at where they at and where they ought to be, where they should be, and where they could be. You can't talk to folks unless you tell them about what Jesus has done. Amen. You ain't preaching unless you tell them Jesus is the propitiation for your sin. Right. You can't get from the turn from their wickedness until you tell them that Jesus died in spite of your mix. Yes. Right. 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 Can you say, my Amen. Paul, he had a way of delivering the word that caused folks to to rethink how they were living. And it's important, it's very important that we realize the price that was paid. Amen. We will take into consideration what Jesus actually did for our mess. I should be in hell. You should be in hell. I should have been dead years ago for the mess I was doing. But Jesus took my place. Father prepared me a body. And I'll go down and I'll redeem that back to you. Can you say amen? amen. We ought to know what Paul knows. We need to know. We should know what Paul knows. What motivated Paul? What gave Paul such strong conviction and passion for this preaching was his experience. So a lot of us claim to know Jesus, but we ain't never had an experience. The cross ain't, ain't, ain't an experience. That, that was his experience. We ain't never had a true encounter with Christ. Paul had an encounter with the risen Christ. In other words, Paul was persecuting the church, and all of a sudden he met some power greater than the authority that he represented. And it knocked him off his horse. And he said, Lord, who are you? Right. And Jesus spoke, I am he that you are persecuted. It is hard uh -huh. to kick against the prick. So Paul realized right off the bat, he had an encounter. Yeah. A lot of us being in Christian don't know we ain't had no encounter. Because guess what? An encounter with Christ would change us completely and entirely. Can you say, man? Amen. It will change you completely and entirely. I, I, I'm just not a component of folk in and out. I, I don't put no stock in folk that are in and out. Hot and cold. Sometime on fire. Sometime cold. Somewhere along the line. You haven't had a true encounter. Oh, God. You ain't had a true experience with Christ. You had an, a, a, a religious experience. 
You, you've been around religious folks. You, you, you got a little bit of religiousness, but you ain't had an encounter. Because an encounter will totally and completely change an individual. Paul mean, glory to God. Paul was mean, glory. And Paul was afraid of that man when he met Jesus, glory. All of that meanness, when that change took place, all of that meanness had to vacate. It had to find somewhere else to go. That, that devil in him had to find another group of swine to go into because God had met Jesus on the road to the map and totally and completely turned him around. So he's preaching to the dogs. Those that are afar off. And what he was telling, you that are afar, were afar off, have been brought near or nigh by the blood of Jesus. You can't reach nobody until you tell them, brother, that they worth something. You can't uh, get folk to turn and change if all you telling them one for you. Cross would Christ wouldn't have had to go to the cross. You got to tell them that Christ went to the cross because He loved you. So God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believe in Him shall not perish. He did it because He loved you. He didn't do it because he needed me. He didn't do it because he wanted me. He did it because he loved me. Spring right. yeah. wasn't so special to God that he wanted that, 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 I, that, that he wanted what I wanted. He did it because he loved me. He hated my mess. He hated the sin. He despised all of that. But he had love enough in his heart to save me. To send his son. To let me know that hey. I'm worth dying for. We shout holler for all we want. And folk is out there in sin. And will change their way of thinking. Unless you convince them that God loves. That's why it is bad. Well, for us in, 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 in Christendom. To look down our nose at folk. That ain't where we are. To cause them to think that they are less than what we are. That's what the Jews had done to the Gentile. Yeah. Remember Jesus' encounter with the woman at the well? Yes. In, their, in, their, in their conversation, their dialogue between one another, she said to him, you Jews have no dealings with us. Why? Because y'all think we dogs. We, we're unclean. We, we're unfit. And Jesus said to her, if you would have known, glory to God, who it is that's sitting here talking to you right now, you would have asked me for a drink, and I would have gave you living water. Folks that are thirsty don't need a natural drink, they need a spiritual drink. One that will keep or quench that thirst every time they feel a thirst, it'll quench it. It would become this life. The Apostle Paul, the most awesome apostle in all of Scripture, he was making it clear to the dogs that y'all are something to God. Matter of fact, you've never been nothing to him. You've always been something. Just because he chose the Jew didn't mean you weren't included. In the fullness of time, God had you on glory. Can you say that some of them been in, in Christendom 30 plus years and, and, and there's some folk out there that don't know nothing about God. When we approach them, we got to let them know they are as special to God as we are. Because God had them in mind from the foundation of the world. It's not my will, he said at one time, that any man perish, but all come to repent. Yeah. <coughs> it ain't the cross, it's preaching pre-cross. It's letting folk know why cross had to happen. Why Jesus had to die. Why he had to shed his blood. Why he had to go in their place. 
The problem is, sister, folk are raised in households that don't know Christ. Most of us probably was raised in households that didn't know Christ. Our parents and our grand, they knew of Christ. They went to church. But they didn't have what they called some of them, I ain't saying everybody, but they didn't have an encounter that would propel them to live holy. Yes. They didn't have an encounter that would propel them to live righteous. They just had a religious encounter that, 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 that said they can shout. That said they can dance. That they said they can holler. That said they can run all over the church. That said but an encounter produced change. Somebody in here in this encounter with Christ produces change. Don't wear the label if you don't know the game. Probably there's too many Christians wearing the label Christian. But we don't know the game. But Paul was sick to the dogs. And you know what? He had to straighten out one of the apostles. That still, even though he was an apostle, that, see, that's how we think sometimes. Peter was an apostle. But he was living in a, such a way that he was showing the Gentiles who were better than they were. Every time he, he, he was with the Gentiles, he acted with them, he mingled with them, he associated with them. But when the authorities come down from the head church of Jerusalem, Peter would withdraw. And Paul said, I, I witnessed it. I seen what he was doing. He acted like, hey, he was ashamed that we were them Gentiles because the church folk were there. Some of us are like that. We'll hang out with them folks we know ain't living nothing. And we ain't telling them about Christ. So ain't no change happening. But when we see church folk coming around, we'll try to withdraw ourselves. What Peter was doing, he was playing that game. And he said, uh-uh. He said, I withstood him face to face. That, that's a problem. We won't talk to folk face to face. We'll talk behind their backs. About me. But Paul said, I told him to his face, he should have known that. Yeah. Every time the, 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 the head church comes down, the bishops and everybody that's supposed to be in authority in religiousness, you want to call yourself where they are and leave the Gentiles alone. Paul said, that ain't going to happen. He said, because he was to be blamed. The word of God was sent not only to the Jew, but also to the Gentile, to the Greek, to the swan and the free. That's why he said, I ain't neither male nor female. This is for them Baptist folk. They think gender is what God's about. God ain't about gender. Why? Because the word of God said he is spirit. Amen. He's not a man. He's not a female. He's not a man. He is spirit. So he ain't about a man or a woman. It's about we're not called men or women in God. We are called sons. And we're made sons by the blood of Jesus. And that, that word son ain't pertaining to a gender issue. It's it's, it's a name called his children. Yes. We're his children. Yes. We belong to him through the blood. Yes. <laughs> you ain't preacher. I, I, I'm just glad I was on the phone. I probably got mad enough to fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you ain't preacher unless you went to the cross. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul, God said start at the cross. He said when you start at the cross, you don't have to go to it. Amen. Amen. When Philip, God's Spirit spoke to Philip, and the unit was sitting on the cast, riding 
he, he wasn't right. He was punk reading the scripture, but he had no understanding. And the spirit of the Lord said, catch up with him. In other words, get in a run. And all of a sudden, spirit, Philip started running, and he caught up with the character, the eunuch, sitting up there. And he said, do you understand what you read? And he said, no, at least someone explain it to me. And the Bible said, and Philip, yeah, he invited him to get up in the chair. Said, you know about what I'm, yeah, I know. Get up in here and explain it to him. He sat down beside him and began to preach Jesus. Yes, yes, See, when you're preaching Jesus, you don't have to preach, he died. You don't have to preach, he did. What did he do? He said, Father, prepare me a part. And I'll go down and I'll redeem man. The Bible said I was a search going on in heaven, in earth, under the earth, and nobody was found worthy. So tell them about Jesus falling to you. So call them a private body. I'll go down. And the Bible said, Phil will begin to preach under the anointing. I'm a son, I'm going now. I'm going down there now. Yeah, there had to be some anointing to cause a man to say, die some wall. I don't 
is already done. Into thy hand, glory to God. I commit my spirit. Now we can say the same thing when it comes down to our dying hour. Father, into thy hand. I've done what you told me to do.
knowing what Paul knew will bring a change in our lives. Can you say amen? We'll look, rethink about what we think about what God's Word is saying. My folks, are mysteries, mysteries. Those mysteries is what God intended, and that was to include Gentiles into the kingdom. God said it earlier, He is a family. He is about family. He made mankind in His own image. Now, I've got one question. I'll be done. What nationality was that? <laughs> Since the Jews think they so special. What nationality was it? He was none because he had neither mother nor father. God created. In his own name. Yeah. That's why all they wanted was dirt. He wasn't black, he wasn't white, he wasn't Jew, he wasn't Greek. He was just dirt. So for me to think I'm so special to God and you not, that's insane. I believe you got that, Sister Cook. Search it. See if you can't study. See if you can't figure out on your own what nationality I am of. Come back and tell me. I'm going to tell you that you ain't going to find it out. Because it don't exist. To be have a nationality, you have to come from a nation of individuals or people. Adam came from God. Amen. Amen. So what made the Jews think they so special? Your origin, or their origin, begin in that land. The nationality begin in that land, that nation where God had planted them. But knowing what God or Paul knew will bring a change in that. Amen. Amen. It's nothing. He said, "I'm full of respect." Neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come will separate me from the love of God. It's knowing who you are. Amen. And understand the mystery of God, which is He's a family. Amen. That's the only mystery that, that, that God wanted both to know is I, I love all. I created you in my own name. So I'm not partial. Amen. God is not partial. He's not partial to nobody. There's no individual that's ever walked this earth that's really that special to God and others not. We all are on the same plane with God. For God so loved the world. Not the few, not the masses, but God so loved the world. Amen. Amen. So if you're going to get folk turned on to Jesus, tell them about why he does what he does. Amen. Why he done, folks that are appreciative will run to the Lord. To you know, it, 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 it just frustrates me. That I don't even like to talk to preachers. It frustrates me. His words that were, if I be lifted up. He ain't, he ain't just talking about the cross. Lift him up in your prayers. Yes. Lift him up in your witness. Yes. Lift him up by your lips. Yes. That's what he's saying. In other words, if they see Christ in you, and what you do, that'll draw them. Yes. The household of faith, saints, is suffering because ain't nobody coming in here getting saved. Sparing, you might get on here. But 
Folk ain't coming in the household of faith this day and time getting saved. It just ain't happening. Why is that? Why is that? Why, why is it our friends and our family members who are still losing sleep because they ain't so? Why is it? Two reasons. They ain't hearing nothing and they ain't seeing nothing. And what they see is turning them off. Y'all hear the little cliche, sheep begets sheep? The church grows because it's sheep or drawing other sheep. Amen. Not the pastor. Our job is to feed, nourish them, and protect them. Your job is to get them in here and turn on to the Word of God. But the sad thing is that the ones that's in here ain't turned on to the Word. Y'all don't like to hear that type of prayer, but it's the truth. I, I, got, I, I really got, I pulled in, I got frustrated as I was pulling in here part. When I see one of the young people walking out of the house in their bare feet, sleeping in the eye at 10 o'clock. And those that's over them ain't got sense enough to turn them on to Jesus. They didn't come here. They went elsewhere, probably home, because they weren't at home. And I'm like, this pity for an adult to say they love the Lord, but a child walked out of their house not going to the Lord's house. It's a sad indictment. We're not turning our children or our family members on to the Lord because we don't know what Paul did. Amen. Our Sunday school should be packed with the children of this church. But guess what? Their parents ain't right. I'm fussing. They have not had any experience with Christ, so their children are going to grow up without experience with Christ. Two more generations, the church will be totally empty. And the reason being is Parents don't know God, so they can't pass on to God what they know because they don't know God. And that generation, which is the generation after Simeon, will not know God because his generation is not taken to church. His it, 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 generation, parents are not instilling him, in him what Jesus done. Pre cross. So when they get adults, they won't be going to church because their parents didn't go and their parents didn't go. And God, that's why God gave the command to tell your children. It is a sad indictment. I'm, I'm going to get off my sofa. For sinning, almost primarily every Sunday, be the only child in this church in Sunday school. It is a bad indictment on your parents. I told God, I said, God, stop blessing them for me. If, if one of his prophets can, can call a, a, a sheep bear out of the woods to devour some hard-headed children, I'm going to ask God, stop blessing y'all if y'all don't deserve it. And that's what I've done. I, I, I told God, I said, stop blessing them folk. Maybe they'll do that. Stop coming to their rescue. Stop, stop lifting them out of their troubles when they get in trouble because they don't care about you until they're in trouble. I said, God, just stop it for a while. Don't, don't stop it completely, but teach them a lesson. Teach them a lesson so they get turned on to you. Amen. Amen. But if you knew what, if you knew what Paul meant, and that's why God, he just got, he's got me reading about Paul 
So I don't really find that more what God expects of me as a man of God. Can you say amen? And as your leader, I got to pass that on. That's what God, the same thing He expects of me, He expects of you. Nothing less. Well, I don't have no office in that church. Don't, no difference. I ain't called to do this. I ain't called. You're still called to live holy and righteous. That's the main issue in the household of faith. But you first have to be taught what God expects of you. And it don't happen unless you come. Amen? Because all you hear on Sunday mornings is getting known to. Getting known to you ain't going to cause you to do that. But learning God's Word and what He expects of you, we so I can't get up here and scream every Sunday he died because you're still going to be doing what you're doing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I love him. Well, he loves me, but the bottom line is, do I love him? That's what Jesus, that's what Jesus wants to know. Do we love him? And if we love him, what did he tell us to do? He ain't talking to preachers. I'm talking to teaching a little bit now. He ain't talking to preachers. He's talking to those that believe. If you love him, he wants you, you can't feed what you ain't, you don't know. Amen. Everybody in here should be able, you've been here long enough, I've been here past the 30 some years. You've been here long enough to be able to teach. I ain't talking about having a call to teach, but to be able to teach. But you can't teach what you don't know. Amen. Amen. So the Jews, all the, all the Jews knew was the old lad. And he stumbled in that. That's all they knew. They didn't know nothing about grace, faith. They didn't know nothing about all of that. They just knew that old letter and it was surprised. A lot of us, all we know is shaking the preacher's hand. That's good enough. But it ain't. Amen. Young people, we've been saying this for years. Young people in this church need to step up. So we're getting ready to get off the scene. Amen. Believers' voice of deliverance will not be led by Sister Spring and Brother Spring many more years. We're about to get off the scene. So where's our teachers? Where's our deacons? Where's our preachers? Nobody's stepping up. Because some of us stepping down. True, come on. Amen. Paul said, Follow me as I follow Christ. Two of us are never stepping into our what God is called. We was talking earlier about people just up leaving church. Hallelujah, God, lead me to know God had. Because if God had given you a ministry to go somewhere, you were totally out of order with God. Separate unto me, Paul and Saul, unto a work. If God has not given you a work, and you left because this incident happened, or you got mad or frustrated with something that happened or with someone, you are totally out of order, and you're living in a curse. Amen. But God is people. Believers, we've been in existence for almost 40 years. Pope need to step up into what God has called them to do. Amen. And mature most of all. Mature in the Lord. Paul was called to preach to the dogs to convince them that they are worthy to be called children of God. And God didn't want them just to remain 
in that one spot. He wanted them to progress into what He's called them to be. People of God. Doing God's work. Amen. He's called all of us to do His work. What work has God called you to do? Ask yourself. I ain't asking you the question. You ask yourself. What work has God called you to do in the household of faith? Whatever your hands set to do, the Word of God says, do it to the glory of God. Amen. Whatever, whether it be eating or drinking or anything, whatever you're doing, God says, do it for His glory. And we got to focus on what God's called us to do. Not a calling, but what God's called us to do as His children in the household of faith. God bless you. Stay with me.